Hi, this is Dave from ACCAPC.com. So what we're going to do today is where we're going to have a look at something called the costing. There are lots of costing techniques that we uh, can use, yes, in establishing the costs for each of the individual products. So, what we're trying to do in this particular section is where, from a service perspective, is going to start from the just-in-time system. So, what do I mean by just-in-time system? That would be the same as what I mean by lean manufacturing. The aim for that is that we're going to eliminate or minimise the inventory within the warehouse. Why we're going to do that is simply because the inventory, but the lot of inventory within the warehouse, of course, we have to pay for it. So, for example, we need to employ more persons to look after those inventory uh, setting up more CCTVs to look after those inventories, for example, inventory would get damaged, etc, etc. And this will lead to the inefficiency within the factory. As a result of that, of course, what we are trying to do is where we are going to eliminate the inventory. The way we're going to do that is where we're going to use something called the pool approach, which means if the customer orders the goods, from our company, then we're going to start manufacturing it very, very quickly and send to him, rather than storing a lot of inventory in place before we send to him. Okay, so that's the JIT. Because our aim for that is not just we're going to minimise the costs, but also we need to ensure the quality within the company. So our aim is to minimise the cost, but at the same time ensure the quality. And hence, using this JIT, of course, we can minimise the cost. But how are we going to make sure that we can you know, improve or you know, ensure the quality is good? Of course, we're going to have a look at the total quality management. Okay, it's the TQM for short. Total quality management simply says that for every business, they have lots of business processes, that's no problem. What you need to do is to get the first thing right. There's no point that you have, um, you know, have used a very, very inefficient machinery at the first time. So because if you have used the inefficient machinery at the first time, you think about how to make it more efficient later on. And that will be too late. And that will be you know, very, very costly for your company because the costs to correct those mistakes is greater than the costs of preventing, uh, you know, of you know, of preventing those mistakes from from happening. And from that perspective, getting the first thing right is quite important. And also, TKM also says not just to keep the you know do the first thing right, but also you need to do the continuous improvement. Because it thinks that every business process can be improved. And hence, what we're trying to do, continuous improvement, which means we're going to continue to you know, decrease the costs yeah, for each and every process. So, so from that perspective, that's how we deal with it. And the, the way we're going to deal with it is where we're going to focus upon casing costing later one when we come to it okay so you know from a costings perspective what we're trying to do is to minimize the costs and also ensure the quality and that's the basic idea but next question is before we minimize the costs we need to know our cost so for example we set up the cost at ten dollars for each particular product including the raw material labor overhead etc fine $10 is, is here, so we set up there, and then our aim for that is to try to minimise the cost, for example, from, you know, from, from $10, for example, down to $5. But how are we going to do that then? Of course, we need to make sure that uh, the cost we have set up is appropriate at the first time, yes? So from that perspective, we're going to have a look at a lot of costing methods that we can set up the costs. So why we're going to use the cost? Of course, we're going to minimise the cost. That will be the same. Uh, that 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 will be the first thing. And secondly, for most of the businesses nowadays, what they're going to do 
is where they're going to set up their selling price using the cost plus pricing. So, if you are going to use the cost plus pricing, you know, way to set up your price to sell this particular product, for example, if you know your cost to be ten dollars, you want to make a profit of two dollars, so that you're going to sell the product at twelve dollars. You need to make sure that you know the cost is ten dollars. But how are you going to do that then? Of course, we can use something called the absorption costing to establish the overheads allocating in each of the products. But in the modern manufacturing, you know, modern business world nowadays, the absorption costing may not be quite suitable. Especially in the companies where lots of you know drivers for cost will happen, not just for the labor hours or machine hours, but also for, for example, inspection checks, that kind of thing, setup costs. So from this perspective, we're going to introduce the activity-based costing to set up the costs okay, relating to each of the project in each of the product. And also, how we're going to you know, for example, if some of the customers are individual customers and their demand is quite unique. As a result of that, we need to establish the costs for each of these specific orders ordered by the customer. And hence, we're going to introduce something called the job costing method as well. Also, for some of the customers, not only they're going to want one particular order, but maybe they want a batch of orders, so for example, 10 orders, yes, in one batch. And hence, we're going to have a look at the batch costing as well. So, those are the ways that we are going to focus upon in setting up the costs, okay, for each of these, uh, you know, products in place. Of course, we're going to introduce more in a minute. But, it will be quite naive for the companies nowadays to use the cost plus pricing because there are lots of competition in place. It is not saying that you incur the cost of $10 and you want to make a profit of $2, then you can sell it at $12. Maybe one of your competitors has sold the product at only $8, but, you sell, but, but you're going to sell it at $12. So if I were the customer, if the quality of these two products are the same, of course, I would choose the lower price, yes? Lower price of $8 rather than 12 And hence, what the company is going to do nowadays, they're going to change from the cost plus pricing way to uh, you know, set up their same price to the target approach. Which means, what they're going to do Firstly, this is the same price, this is the profit, and this is the cost. What they're going to do, the first, the first one, is the, how much profit you're going to make. I want to make $2 of profit. And what the company's going to do next is that he will use a lot of you know, measures in place. For example, searching for the information of you know, how much prices that the competitors charged, and also doing some sort of benchmark with some of the competitors, how much you know, price they are going to charge as well. So for example, from the you know, industry's reports perspective, our competitor is charged on our page on this type of product at only $8. And hence, what you're going to do is that you're going to set up your costs. Yeah, You want to make $2 of profit, they will charge $8 on our page, then so that you're going to charge $8. And hence, you're going to reduce your cost down from $10 down to $6, okay, in order to make $2 of profit when charging $8 of the same price. And that is what, what I mean by target costing. So what the target costing is going to do is that we are not just to focus upon the internal perspective, but rather we're going to focus upon the external environment of the competitors, how much price they're going to charge. And that will be quite important for you to do that. Okay, so that's one by target costing. From that perspective, then, this target costing of six dollars over here will not only include the direct materials, labor, and overhead, 
but also some of the costs that incurred at the start of the product development. So, for example, research expenses, development costs, environmental costs, that kind of thing. So, in the modern business world nowadays, particularly the stakeholders are quite fancy, quite interested in your triple bottom line, which means your impact on the environment, people, not so profit. As a result of that, of course, we need to take into account those costs when setting up the target costs. You're not going to say to me, well, Steve, I'm only considering the direct labour, direct materials and overhead, but also within a large, especially within multinational companies, large organisations, you need to consider other costs as well. And from this perspective then, we're going to also consider the life cycle costs with regards to each of the individual products. And hence, within the life cycle costs, of course, we also need to consider the environmental costs relating to each of, the, each of these individual products. Of course, as I said to you before, you know, in setting up the you know, same price, for example, you need to do a lot of market research, and what we're trying to do uh, is where we're going to introduce a topic called benchmarking. As well, okay, so we're going to look at that when we come to it. Okay, so that's it. Uh, target cost, then once we set up the target cost of $6, that's fine, and we think that would be no problem whatsoever, then we're going to put that into production. Yeah, fine, so we've got the raw materials and then we're going to produce it, and we aim at the, you know, the costs incurring during the whole process to be $6 rather than $10. And hence, the next thing we're going to do is that, you know, for this $6, it is the $6 at the start. But we want the $6 to be minimised or to be reduced, maybe to $5 for example. And hence what we're trying to do is where we're going to consider how to minimise the cost. The way we're going to minimise the cost is quite straightforward, is where we're going to buy the bad quality raw materials. Yeah, by buying the bad quality raw materials, of course, we can save a cost. Yes, because bad quality, cheaper price and hence lower costs. But is that good or bad for the company? So of course it's bad for the company as a whole from a long term perspective because you're using the bad quality raw materials. And from this perspective then, not only you're going to minimise your costs, but also you're going to make sure that your quality is good. Of course, what we're trying to do is to use the case in accounting. Kaizen accounting, what do I mean by Kaizen? K is for guy. Sen is for son. So, what do I mean by K is where we are going to whip ourselves. Okay, so that's what I mean by K. And Sen, which means we're going to sacrifice a goat because you can see the word here. So let me just to write this down. Okay, so you're going to sacrifice your goat, okay, on the desk. So for example, so you're going to, you know, it continues to improve your business. Okay, so Kaizen is what I mean by continuous improvement. So, case accounting says nothing is perfect. Anything that can be improved by the business in the long term. So, that's one by case and accounting. Of course, we're going to look at that when we come to it. So, case and accounting can be linked quite often in your exam with the standard costing. What does that actually mean, says? Case and accounting focusing on Minimize your costs. For example, $10 down to $6. But standard costing says 
that you can set up the standard of six dollars or maybe ten dollars for example you set up a standard of ten dollars you can't exceed the cost of ten dollars otherwise it will be the adverse variance and hence this particular manager who has to be blamed because it's not going to stick to a standard or you know or uh, well above the standard but rather if you go and say that the cost is to be eleven dollars of course you will be blamed so from that perspective what the manager is going to do under the standard costing system they're going to stick to the standard not to minimize the standard so for example not to improve the standard not to decrease the cost from ten dollars to six dollars they have no incentive doing that because you know if you're going to lower the understand you know, trying to improve the standard from ten dollars to six dollars. Of course, in the next year, you have to stick to six dollars rather than ten dollars. It will be quite hard for you, as an example. And hence, within the standard costing system, the managers within a company may not be encouraged to lower down the cost, lower down the costs. But within the case of costing here, it encouraged that every person within the organisation to come up with new ideas of how to improve the business processes and hence lower down the costs. Of course they can get rewarded by doing so. And hence under this two yeah, method over here, of course the culture within the organization would be different. Of course we're going to look at that, look at them when we come to it. Okay, so that's all for the overall introduction, yes, for costing where we're going to have a look at this following aspect in more detail in the next section.